You ever just make coffee and be afraid to take that first sip? Don't get it twisted. I had what's called a medicine ball in this thing. Because I'm feeling sick, that's what they say. But I feel fine. Just got to quarantine. Anyway, uh, I like to save these cups. It's like a vibe thing to me. Everything is a vibe thing to me. Uh, I get in my mood, I'm able to do a lot of things the muse would have to be here for me to do. Get it? So, create my own muse. But anyway, this thing is hot. Just made me some coffee. I'm scared, I'm scared. Take that first sip. You want me to love you, but you don't love me now. Why should I give my heart to you? We gonna shut that motor down. I've been searching for you for a long time now, but you've left my heart's vision. Now you want me to stay in your life. That won't happen again. No, you said no. And so I like that book. It's sick, but here now. My name is Charlie Ray Creef Creef. Let me holler at you. I read a book this week. Right there behind me. It's called The Death of Mrs. Westaway. And it was a book by Miss Ruth Ware. Shout out to Ruth Ware. I, I don't think she needed an introduction, so let's move along. This book right here, I think, probably because of the title, right? The Death of Mrs. Westaway. That's a fire-ass title. That's a fire-ass title. And I picked it up, and I think the, the cover went along with it. I mean, look at it. It's beautiful. It's like a graveyard. There's this fancy-ass, creepy-ass gate right there at the beginning as well. And, um... The title matched with the, the book, with the fog in the background. It tells a story. And so right away, I'm enticed. I want to read this story. And so let me tell you about what I found out. When you cooped up and you ain't, you ain't got nowhere to go, can't do anything, you just got to just dive headfirst into your hobbies. It's a book like this that you want to read. Hopefully you're not as scared, you know what I mean, because it, it has a lot of elements within it, right? It's mystery. Um, of course, it's thriller, psychological thriller, I think, for the most part, and some elements of horror as well. Um, but a woman who, who basically, all alone in this world after her mother was hit and killed, um, a hit and run accident or whatever the case may be. Um, she's a tarot reader, right? She read those, those uh, cards where she's able to tell people's lives by whatever the image is on the card, you know, those type of people, right? And um, she's in deep. She, she's up, up to her head in debt because she she went to a loan shark. People, don't don't go to loan sharks. What is this, the 50s? There's other legal ways to get it. You understand what I'm saying? Um, the point is she was desperate and she needs something uh, quick. She needs to come up with some money quick. And on her doorstep, rise a letter. And uh, this letter says, you are the granddaughter of one Mrs. Westaway who has passed away. God rest her soul. And you need to come to her funeral. And maybe there's a wheel with your name, you know, stamped in it or whatever the case may be. And so what would you do, right? What would you do? She knew that she wasn't this person's heir, right? But if somebody comes to your doorstep talking about they will break your teeth, they break your bones. You do what? Speaking in Yoda terms, you do what? Mm. So right away there's a story. So I'm gonna be on I'm gonna be on the hardback here. I'll read the summary from the hardback. No more Libby, no more Libby, at least not today. On a day that begins like any other, Harriet Westaway receives a mysterious letter bequeathing her, bequeathing her a substantial inheritance from her grandmother. How knows there's been a mistake? Her grandparents have been dead for more than 20 years and she hasn't had anyone to help her since her mother died three years ago. But the bills are piling up and Howl is running out of options. 
down on her luck and worn thin by the weight of adulthood, Powell can't help but wonder if the cold reading skills she's honed as a tarot card reader might help her claim the money. Soon, Howe finds herself at Trapassan, the sprawling estate in the English countryside where the deceased Mrs. Westaway's family has gathered to pay their respects and claim their request. But it doesn't take long for Howe to realize that there's something very, very wrong about this strange situation, and the inheritance is at the center of it. <laughs> Two ninety nine. <laughs> That's a good price for a, for basically a movie in print form. I love books. So. Just based off of that summary, um, I think it reads like a mystery, right? Of course, she has to get away from uh, her hometown in order to go try to make up some money like I explained. But at the core of this book is this family that she goes to. You know what I mean? There's this nice old, just just classical looking mansion. Probably a castle it looked like. I don't know. I'm reading it. But um, there's this family in there, you know what I mean, who was kind of estranged from this woman, their mother, who passed away, Mrs. Westaway. And um, everybody's there paying their final respects. They haven't seen each other in so long because people couldn't wait to get away from this, this house. And um, these characters are, are very colorful. Um, there's Harding, who was the oldest brother. There's Abel, the middle brother. And there's Ezra. And at the, um, the center of it all is this disappearance of um, Maud. Mord is her name, and Mord is um, the sister to the brothers who disappeared. And there was a mix-up, people thinking that maybe Mord is the main character's mother. Hence why Mrs. Westaway put her in the wheel. But as we read, we realize, like, okay, she's lying. When is this going to, you know, kind of break the water, so to speak, the ice, I should say. And um, slowly but surely, we start to realize, like, okay, maybe the big, big reveal isn't when they'll find out. Because what's going on here is something is incredibly wrong with this family. There's secrets like crazy. There's this creepy riddle, right? I'm not going to say it here because I don't remember it. It's like uh, revolving magpies and stuff like that. That's a big uh, motif in this story, magpies. And, um... At the end of the day, um, people are trying to figure out what happened to Mord and what is how the main character's real place in this family. And she starts to uncover things by talking to uh, the creepy maid who was, who was probably the meanest maid you could ever come by, right? Who just been around since, you know, the kids were, were yay high or whatever. But um, from there to... Um, creepy things being etched in the glass in the room that she's in uh, um, from photo albums she starts to realize like, okay maybe this family isn't letting on what's what really happened to their sister and what my place is and so there there, there are some some tie-ups that I had and uh, I feel like this book would have been more interesting and more efficient in what it was trying to accomplish by being a shorter book um, a lot of things was was slowed down as monologue and, and, and filler and things like that and it's understandable be, but I'm, what I'm saying is it reads like she was just trying to fill the time um, but at the end of the day um, I thought it was a fantastic read a fun read at first I wasn't with her lying to, to you know to take this inheritance but when this man showed up you know what I mean the the hired, um, you know, muscle, I would say, for the loan shark that she brought the money from and can't pay back. I was thinking, like, okay, well, what would you do? And so I understood why the story got started, and she went that way, you know. I felt for how, you know, how I thought was a person to pity. She, uh, Ruth Ware, the author, did a wonderful job uh, making her a character of sympathy. She had various bad lucks throughout her life, and, um... <laughs> At the end of the day, she hated the woman that she had become because of it. And um, she didn't like to live in mediocrity and, and just living paycheck to paycheck and just being so depressed and being alone and not even having a chance to date because of her situation or whatnot. And um, she became a, became a person who you wanted to be your hero right away. She's a tarot card reader, right? And, and it's cool. 
the way she does it because a lot of the techniques and methods that she uses to control the conversation right with her clients she tries to use to defraud this family right and, and come up with this inheritance um but what you'll find out is she isn't good in the clutch she isn't, she isn't good in the clutch you know there's this this voice in her head the entire time while she was there in crucial moments basically um giving her clues as to a successful conversation with the clients right you know how don't believe your own lies or you control the conversation you ask the questions right she would hear this over and over again and she thought she was the perfect person to defraud this family because she do it all the time she doesn't even believe in this tarot card reading she just does it so that she can make a check and um, I, I, I enjoyed that aspect that this this voice or this um, this subconscious or or her maybe her deceased mother was in her ear the entire time to help her out I thought that you know the whole time we knew she had a dilemma but her morals and scruples made it a moral dilemma and that made it that much more juicier to read about um, as far as skill of craft um, again where is just great at creating character sympathy uh, you feel for not only Howe's character but a lot of um, uh, the people in the backstory right specifically the women and um, I thought another thing as far as skill of craft is her ability to to make everything make sense right to wrap everything up in a nice pretty bowl um, she'll open up many many questions to you um, from the get-go and later down the line she'll she'll make it make sense to you you know what I mean that's pretty much uh, dopamine to a reader you know what I mean when authors make fiction make sense right when they suspend our belief in a, um, a logical a, a logical way within the story but also it's believable and, it, and it's fun I think she's very good at being concise you know what I mean she's very good at uh, creating suspense you know what I mean and holding it holding your holding your uh, attention until that is answered creating suspense and prolonging it over multiple chapters She's unmatched. She's unmatched. There were many great concepts that she, um, you know, adapted from, like I said earlier, hearing the voices in her head to help her out, but also the magpies and, and, and the creepy songs and stuff like that. You know, she places nuggets and, and hints and clues all over the place. You know, if you if you develop an eye for that kind of thing, you know, you can tell like, okay, this is a clue. And I, I, I may have learned something myself, you know, here in quarantine. I've been doing a lot of um, writing for my own novel that I'm writing here, and um, um, I learned a little something. Maybe it's um, you guys know what the technical term is, but I called it the great in between, where a very very pivotal and important question, let's say, was asked by a character. The great in between is paragraphs and paragraphs of either monologue or backstory, where she can use that and then she get right back to the answer that great in between it, it wasn't boring um it, it might qualify as filler but um a lot of it um dealt with character development right maybe even plot progression in some type of way give you a hint or a clue um she really is really good with that like i call the great in between um as far as um things to learn uh the book for the most part was an entertaining mystery for you to solve within this family but at the but at the same time it was also insightful at moments and at spots where a lot of books has to be you know what I mean and it's like an unspoken thing you know uh, we want to laugh and and, and, and and be entertained and stuff like that and scared or whatever go on a thrilling adventure with some awesome characters but we want to learn a little bit something about life as well and uh, she does that she does that I think chapter 16 was the most insightful I think there are three big, you know, I would say, triggers, you know what I mean? Uh, um, one of them, I mean, come on now, you read novels and stuff like this, death is probably going to be up there, death is up there. But with that, with this book, is losing possibly the only person in the world that you love. Um, you know, being a little shaky shake there. Um, with this one being the mom, you know, being the mom, and um, she's literally alone until she goes to this family and has to play like, oh, I'm your long lost niece. And so, very, very fun, but in the heart of things, it's, it's a very, very touching book and, and sentimental at, at spots where 
she's very very hurt she's very very hurt and uh, I thought the last one was probably uh, just being alone just being alone in the world being a loner so um, if you're that type of person you can probably really get comfort from a lot of her thoughts as come accustomed I do want to read a little quote um, actually I got four of them and so I think they're great quotes right so this one here says be skeptical how her mother's voice whispered in her ear and be doubly skeptical when it's something you want to believe you know don't go in with your hopes so high be skeptical in this world. Don't just be believing every damn thing. You understand what I'm trying to say to you? Uh, never believe your own lies because superstition was a trap. That was what she had learned in the years applying her trade on the pier. Touching wood, crossing fingers, counting magpies. They were lies, all of them. False promises designed to give the illusion of control and meaning in a world in which the only destiny came from yourself. You can't predict the future how. Mm. Mm -hmm. Everyone has secrets, things that they did not want to reveal and would go to great, sometimes extraordinary lengths to conceal. And again, it's, it's just a big theme within this book, secrets, you know what I mean? Um, whether you're trying to figure out who has them, how many do they have, and how deep they go. Secret. Instead, Mrs. Westaway had waited until she herself was beyond pain and unleashed this catastrophe on the living and that goes back to the sort of storyline within the mystery you know this woman she passed away she knew something which is why she brought this this estranged so-called niece back into these boys lives so that it's, it's I'm telling you it's a big 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 um what do you call it it's, it's kind of a scandal when you uncover and that's what I like about this character how is very very um, you know, active. She's very active. She does a lot of stupid things that could get anybody killed, but she wanted to get to the bottom of things. And sometimes you get to a point where, what else do you got? To, what else you got to lose? You did. Um, takeaways, right? I just think, you know, you at the beginning of the book, you realize what she's doing. You know, it's a lie. It's going to be a crime, right? Fraud. Um, and then we realize that. The marks of a true person in integrity is doing something and it has to be the right thing even when no one is looking right we know that's what integrity is and so it come down to it uh what would you have done in this situation if you have nothing you have absolutely nothing someone has passed away and apparently her executor and her family thinks that you're a relative and you can come you can come up you can come up on some you can get some green what would you have done in that situation and so, you know, I had a, a long, hard, uh, you know, thinking uh, session with myself. And um, I had to be honest, you know what I mean? If it came down to it, um, depending on how big the inheritance was and, you know, how how much ish I was in, I'm not going to judge nobody because I don't know what I would do. I think um, another big one is I just think something more in this life, right? has to be done for people um, who have been derailed by trauma. Not trauma that they've caused on themselves, right? I'm talking about in a case like how she literally had one person left in her life and then that woman was taken from her tragically, which would have somebody growing up in a world where they get into gangs, they get into all kind of violence, uh, maybe they get into the school to prison pipeline. A lot of things can happen to these people. Um, of course, there can be, you know what I mean, uh, outreach programs. There's there's after school programs. What more could there be for a lot of people walking around that's been derailed by trauma? Maybe maybe I can spark your brain. Maybe I can spark your brain. This is some good ass coffee right now. I'm lying. It's nasty. It's nothing like Starbucks. I put some peppermint mocha in it, but. It don't taste like Christmas. It's supposed to taste like Christmas. Yeah, hey, whatever. I got COVID. Maybe that's what it is. The last thing that I noticed was it mentioned a time in her life after her mother passed and she took on her mother's job uh, being a tarot card reader, um, you know, on this pier that she worked. Somehow there was always hot tea at her kiosk and stuff like that. She mentioned that, you know, on cold days. There'd be hot tea and it just made me think of the ointment 
from a big, big wound, right? Going from day to day, you know, we be like, you know, this ain't doing a damn thing. You know, we rip band-aids off in our lives all the time. But we know that in the long run, those short steps with that ointment, them band-aids, right, them covering the gauze, it's, it's, it's healing us, right? It'll never, never knock, knock the scar away, right? If you lose somebody and people coming around to you and, and, and trying to make your life a little better is what I'm getting at, right? Um, showing kindness, showing love, showing compassion, um, moving what we have going on out of the way in order to be there for you, right? Leave Hati at your kiosk. In the grand scheme of things, right? During them days, you're like, nah, I don't want this nonsense. It ain't bringing my mom back. But like that ointment, it's helping towards your recovery in a sense. And it made me think about how a lot of us, you know what I mean, we, we step back when we're supposed to be comforting each other and we're supposed to be consoling each other and, 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 and getting out of the stage of grief with each other, right? Um, never stop that. Them, them small little ointments that you apply is helping the recovery phase. The hole and the scars and things like that, it's going to be there. It's, it's okay. It's life. We all have to deal with that. But being there for each other and, and leaving hot tea at kiosk, it just warmed my heart. What can I say? I'm sentimental like that. Again, just a fun read. Just a fun read. Especially if you're in quarantine and you like these type of deep, dark books with, with, with family meaning and, and stuff like that. Um, Anybody who should read this book? Anybody with a pulse and two kneecaps should read this. If you have had two kneecaps, you should read this. If you want two kneecaps, you should read this. What's the, what's the problem? It's so funny how when we read these books or even we watch movies, clues that we would see, right, as normal folk. Is it getting dark? As normal folk, we'd get up out of there. And our favorite characters, man, why do they stay, right? We, we do that all the time. We do that all the time. But I guess a story wouldn't get made if we ripping a character out of a situation. And so I think it's sort of an art for someone to make, logically, a character stay in a situation because it wouldn't suspend our belief otherwise. Like, nah, that's fake. He saw, let's say, a head on the ground under his bed while he's standing in his house. But I rest my case. Um, solid book. Tell the book, I gave it a four. I gave it a four out of five stars. Almost gave it a 3.5, but I thought the, the storyline was, um, it was, it was worth reading. You know, it wasn't no ground shat, ground shaking, ground shattering book, but just a good fun mystery read. And, uh, Ruth Ware is always, always a fun person to read. Um, there's tons of books out there for you to read from her. And, um, and The Dark Dark Wood, I think was my favorite one so far. And, um, I mean, I'm telling you, just, just enjoy the book. Just enjoy the book. Um, nowhere. I can't go nowhere. It's got a few more days of quarantine. Just damn COVID, so. Charlie Boy gonna chill. Charlie Boy gonna chill. But I will say this. And now, I must say goodbye. Mm-hmm. Won't you please come back and say hi, hi.